Hello and welcome back to Crystallography for Everyone. In this video, we are going to go into the concept of a unit cell. This is another very important definition that we are going to use in almost every video going forward. We've kind of danced around this point up until now, looking at the different types of lattices. And it, it's really arbitrary if you go over a unit cell or a lattice first, I chose to go over the lattice. So at this point, it, you might want to go back and look at those older videos after watching this, and you might see them in a slightly different light. A unit cell is an object that will fill all space when translated by the lattice translation vectors. I think that the easiest way to understand this is with an example. So I've drawn out this 2D set of points here. So you remember from the videos on lattices, this can have two different types of lattices attributed to it, this series of points. We can see a centered rectangular lattice with these two lattice vectors, A and B. And we can also have a parallelogram lattice. with these two lattice vectors. We'll call them A prime and B prime. We'll construct a lattice, or I'm sorry, a unit cell around these points. It's possible to have multiple unit cells for the same points, the same way we can attribute multiple lattice types to these points. The, so the first unit cell we could see here might be this one. I'll highlight it in what may be blue. So this cell we would call a centered rectangular cell. And if we use the lattice translation vectors, B and A, we can move this cell around to fill the entire lattice infinitely. And you can see how this can keep continuing if we move it to the right and up above we can start to fill space. And you can see there would be no gaps. That's very crucial how we're going to fill all space with no gaps. We can also draw a unit cell down here. I'll draw it right here. I'll use a different color. And the crucial point to note here is that we have two unit cells but they are not preferred over one another. The choice of a unit cell is arbitrary. It's up to the convenience of it. So a particular problem may be better worked out by using the centered rectangular cell in this parallelogram cell.
this cell in particular also has a name, it would be the primitive cell. primitive cell has one lattice point inside of it. So if you consider each point in this cell as maybe being some circle where it would continue around here and continue around here, and you were to add up this contribution from each point, that would give you one lattice point. You could do the same kind of logic on our right centered rectangular cell. And these guys would add up to two. So we'd have a one quarter here, 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 and here. One, one quarter at each of the corners of the cell. And then one whole point is contained in the center. This point would not be shared with anyone else. So we have four times one fourth plus one equals two. The primitive cell is not special, really, other than the fact that it has one lattice point. In many cases, when we go and start working in three dimensions, the primitive cell can look very strange, and we tend to work more with cells that have two or more points in them, non-primitive unit cells. A unit cell that I couldn't use would be a circle. And I'll try and demonstrate that here. So I'll draw some very rough circles around each one of these points. And you can see that if I tried to fill space with these points, I would be left with some gaps in between. If I tried to fill space with these circles, I should say. So these circles would not fill space. Which would break our definition of a unit cell, meaning that circles are not a valid unit cell in 2D space. Analogously, spheres are not unit cells in 3D space. In the next video, we are going to work through some examples. In We're going to stick in 2D, and we're going to combine our knowledge of the unit cell and the basis and lattice to kind of play around a little bit. We're going to get comfortable with these definitions and I hope to see you there.